Welcome to the Fallout 2 Mapper. Welcome to the Fallout 2 Mapper. Welcome to the Fallout 2 Mapper. Welcome to the Fallout 2 fucking Come on. Welcome to the Fallout 2 Mapper. This ancient software was once used to make the Fallout games we love so much and now is really showing its age on my 1080p monitor. Maybe someday this software will receive an update, but until then, let me show you how to make a map and even how to load it into your Fallout game so you can test and play it. If you need help installing or configuring the mapper, check my software installation video, link in the description if it doesn't pop up in the corner here. Okay, first up, once you get the mapper running, it'll start you up on a blank map. You can just drop down tiles to start up a new map if you want, or you could load up one of the original game maps to mess around with. One quick tip while we're on this map, there are three levels on each map you can switch between, and each one counts as a new map. That's what this number is in the corner here, that's your map level. You can switch between all three of them just by pressing these up and down buttons or the page up and page down keys. Okay, good to know. Now let's start a new map. Whenever you create a new map, the mapper will ask you if you want to erase this map. You can click either yes or no here as both will clear the current map. The no option apparently also means yes, a position that Bethesda has since adopted for their dialogue. But um, psh. First, let's take a look at the interface. One, you have a menu up at the top with several different options, files, tools, scripts, and settings. We will get into those later. But the main interface you'll be using is the lower bar here. And the first button on the left here switches between six different categories of art objects that you can place on the mapper. They're pretty self-explanatory. There are items, critters, scenery, walls, tiles, which are your basic floor and roof patterns, and miscellaneous, which includes just about everything else in the game needed to properly script a mod together. Picking one will change the list of objects to that category. Pretty obvious. You can scroll through the list by pressing these arrow keys on the left-hand, right-hand side of it. The plus and minus keys located next to the backspace key will move this list left or right one art piece at a time, each direction respectively. Holding shift while pressing the plus or minus keys will move the proto list by one row at a time, each direction. The same thing happens to the number pad plus key without holding shift, but not the number pad minus key for some reason. Some of these lists have a couple thousand pieces of art in them, and sorting through them is a pretty big pain, but there is a bookmark option. Let's find a good tile. All right, this one shows up pretty well. Just go to the menu bar up at the top, go to tools, and select set bookmark. A message will pop up telling you to hit a number key to bookmark to, and at this point, just press whatever number key you want to bookmark it to. By default, an unbookmarked key will put you right back at tile number zero. Pressing the key you just bound will put you back on the list wherever you bookmarked your list at. The numbers zero through nine are all usable here, and each category list has its own independent zero through nine bookmarks. So if you go from tiles to, say, critters, that same bookmark does not move you into the middle of the critters menu. You have to create a separate bookmark for that. Below the category button are two sets of numbers. The one on the left is the number for the last text you've clicked on. Important for scripting. And the one on the right is the art object number. The object number listed here is actually the object on the far left of the art list. This gray box here usually has a brief description of the art object in the highlighted box, but it will actually show descriptions of any object that you hover over with your mouse. You've already seen the map level indicator. And next to it are a set of eight different art object toggles which will make all objects of that type invisible. Let's take away the walls here, for instance. Very useful if you're trying to hide something behind a wall or place special invisible blocking tiles or just about anything where you need to clear up the visual clutter. This little dial here represents the direction a critter will be facing when you place them on the map and can be changed by pressing the up or down arrow keys here or by holding control and the arrow keys on your keyboard. The copy button will allow you to copy art objects you've already placed on the map, but only those objects in the category you have selected. I have tiles selected, so only tiles are copied. If I were to switch to critters, I can only copy critters. The copy all button allows you to copy everything all at once. Critters, tiles, walls, everything. Well, everything but tiles, it looks like. Don't know why, because I've been able to get it to copy tiles before, so what's the deal? What is the deal? 
The edit button allows you to change scripts and other modifiers for highlighted objects and tiles, as well as manage the inventory of the critters. Delete does exactly what it says, except not to tiles. The TBOV button stands for Toggle Block Object View and turns special tiles that are normally invisible, visible. The Edge button allows you to set the viewable region for the player when they are on the map. Uh, but you need to save the map first. So let's go ahead and save it real quick. And it should be pretty obvious. The right hand arrow goes this way. The left hand arrow goes this way. Up. Down. And you can have multiple overlapping rectangles if you want. And the asterisk or star button right next to it allows you to see the viewable region while editing. Building a new map is pretty easy. Just right click the art object you want to place and left click to place it. Holding down left click will slowly place a series of the same objects in a row, but if you just want to fill in a bunch of tiles quickly, there is an option in the tools menu to use pattern. There are only 26 different patterns available. Select use on one. At first, you can only place one square at a time, but pressing the plus key on the number pad will increase the size by quite a bit each time, making progressively larger and larger blocks of tiles that you can put down. Once you got some stuff in place and are ready to test the map, press F8 to enter a sort of crashy game mode. and F8 again to exit. You can set the start hex on any map by going to scripts, set start hex, and then you just select the place where you want the player to start. It'll do this weird thing where it blanks out the screen, but you just have to scroll up and down or something similar and it will clear out. This same bug actually happens in Fallout 2 if you all tab out and come back in during a conversation. Okay, let's say you got a map all built and you want to test it out in the actual game this step is super easy. Go ahead and save your map. Remember the name you saved it as? You can close the mapper now. Just browse to the Fallout 2 folder you're creating your mod in. Go to ddraw.ini, right click and edit it. Press Control F or edit find and search for starting map. Delete the semicolon right here and add the name of the map you just finished building, which in my case is 111111.map. Map. Go to File, Save. You can close this now and all you have to do is just run Fallout 2. Start a new game. Take your default character if you want, unless you have special things you're testing for. And congratulations, you just made a map for Fallout 2. You made a mod for Fallout 2, it's that easy! Now you can actually go around, play it. You may have to add some extra things in for the critters later, some little AI and stuff, but uh, this is still very effective. Oh hey, couldn't find some rat scorpions here. Yay! Combat works. And while we're at it, you may want to make a shortcut to the game itself just to speed things up a bit. All right, that's everything I've got for this video. If you're interested in more Fallout 2 modding stuff, I am making my own Fallout 2 mod and streaming it on Twitch on Saturdays. Thank you again, Navarro, and all of my supporters. You guys are awesome. Have a nice day, and I hope you're making an awesome mod.